When we last left off, we had a Rosh Hashiva in Kurdistan named Asnat Barzani. I have found some information about her, which I've mentioned previously, and some other information which I'd like to bring to your attention. I'm talking here about two amulets that we have that are fascinating because they tell us both about her and how she was perceived by her community. The first part of the amulet talks about how wise she was and how she was a Kabbalist. And they get this, I guess, from the fact that her father was also considered to be a Kabbalist and a learned man. And therefore, she was respected. And they did not, for a moment, doubt the fact that she could be the head of a yeshiva. But it seemed to have bothered them that she was a woman. Therefore, in their, in their version, what did they do? They say that after she had a boy and a girl born to her, that she asked God to stop her menzies so that she would not have any problem with being clean. This for them was a way to take her sexuality out of the yeshiva. And, and the rest of the amulet, which may be a separate one or may be the second half, I never saw the original because the owner of the amulet showed it to a colleague of mine and then grabbed it and ran home. Uh, the rest of it has a very interesting side to it. It talks, about, it talks about the fact that one day, supposedly, she was up on the roof hanging out laundry. Now, I have to interrupt myself here because she was never hanging up laundry. Her father swore her groom to not allow her to ever do housework, something I would like very much to have in my own ketubah. So we have this woman who is only doing learning and she's supposedly being, hanging, being outside hanging up this laundry when a gentleman comes, or not such a gentleman, shows up and he decides that she's so beautiful that he wants to rape her. She sees him and knowing Kabbalistic secrets, she freezes him to the spot on the wall right outside her house. And he stays there all night. In the morning the town comes and sees this man frozen to the wall and can't figure out what he's doing there. They bring the head of the community, the Kadi, and he says, please let him go. She refuses. She says, I can't let him go because he was about to, to do something terrible to me, not just a thief, but this was something immoral. After a long negotiation with the Kadi, who agrees to hang him, like Haman, to hang him uh, the next morning, she agrees to free him. Here we have, again, one side, the community is respecting her, is showing she has amazing powers, including Kabbalistic powers. On the other hand, they're not able to free themselves of the fact that she's a woman and that her sexuality is going to present problems for her. Nevertheless, she was the Rosh Yeshiva and remains to be a very venerated woman to the very, this very day.